NFL Zone for 4 for 4 Science, where we discuss four science topics in four minutes. While there are many threats to our fragile human lives, NASA is trying to tackle one space-tastic one, asteroids. James, how is NASA protecting us from impending doom? Well, it's going to call Bruce Willis, obviously. He's the only one who can save us. No, but seriously, NASA is bringing together all its existing efforts to deal with these so-called near-Earth objects, and it's built in basically a new planetary defense office. Now, it might sound kind of a bit out there, but this could be serious stuff. You know, uh -huh. we saw with the Chelly being... Chelyabinsk meteor a few years ago, all the buzz around the Halloween asteroid last yep. year. These are big, big things. As important as it is to track these near-Earth objects, this whole restructuring sounds a bit like a PR move to me. Mm -hmm. NASA was already tracking these objects. It didn't really go into much detail about the new things that NASA will be doing with this Planetary Defense Office. So, yeah, it sounds a little bit like bureaucratic restructuring, but I fully support it. Oh, snap. I mean, at the same time, we have all these crazy ideas of what to do when an asteroid comes. I mean, deflect them with an ion, even like some people think nuking them. So I think it would be a good idea to have this plan in action or to come up with technologies in order to um, better deal with it if this were to actually sometime in the future happen. I will, I will echo your sentiment, Lauren, that this really is just formalizing an idea that was already in place <laughs> and getting it out there and letting people know that you are safe. An asteroid mining company has started to use space material to create 3D printed objects. Lauren, should we be impressed? It's space powder. <laughs> well, they're saying this is the first time that an object or materials from outer space was used to 3D print an object. It was made from, or a company called Planetary Resources made it. They want to mine the moon someday, so huh. you can see where their head's at. Um, but yeah, they used uh, iron, nickel, and cobalt from an asteroid impact in Argentina to make this kind of cool geometric object. So yeah, it's pretty neat, and it shows that we can use stuff from outer space to actually create objects in the future. Hmm. I mean, it looks really cool, and I think that 3D printing is going to play a big part. We're seeing 3D print printing play a big part in space. So, you know, it's, it's a start of something good, I think. Yeah. I think it's a good stepping stone for future space travel if we are able to source our energy from space and not always constantly have to bring it from Earth. I think it's a great stepping stone to being able to travel further in space and for longer periods of so time. So pretty much humans are destroying another uh, another object. We're just going to use up all the resources of another, it's not obviously a planet, but the moon, which I don't think is necessarily fair. We could be just... We have to stop going in and messing up everything else. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't necessarily agree with that, but okay. <laughs> At 183 years old, you expect to be, um, how do we say this nicely, dead. But for a giant tortoise, it's their golden years. Now, this little guy has a new lease on life thanks to a healthier diet. James, how has diet improved Jonathan the tortoise's way of life? There's a message here for all of us. Poor Jonathan the tortoise, 183 years old, living on the British outpost of St. Helena, blinded by cataracts, Aww. struggling to eat. You know, his vet comes in. I was exchanging some emails with the vet over the weekend. Basically, completely revamped the guy's diet. Much healthier. Cucumbers, carrots, guava, all sorts of stuff. Bananas. Bananas, thank you. <laughs> uh, you know, Jonathan's beak, now much healthier. He's a lot more active. He's gained weight. As I say, there's something there for all of us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think it's cool what the veterinary did. He looked at the beak and saw that it was weak, and then that kind of triggered him to think that he might have nutritional deficiencies. So if we were to relate it to humans, if we look at our fingernails or our skin or our hair, and if those are weak, then we can say, oh, we might have nutritional de deficiencies as well. Mm -hmm. It's always so inspiring to see people step in and help endangered animals. Mm -hmm. But the only problem I was reading that Jonathan doesn't uh, like to get intimate with his female tortoises on the island. He leaves that for his younger counterpart, David. So I guess he'll, he'll just be enjoying his older years free of female. He's 183 years right. old. You can sit <laughs> out, guys. David wasn't that guys, much younger. This is about to get weird. <laughs> Migraine sufferers know all too well how debilitating these headaches can be, but there may be new drugs on the horizon soon. Claire, what may the doctor order? So what's exciting about these new drugs is that it shows really our better understanding of migraines. So now we have this theory that there's this area of the brain called the trigeminal nerve that triggers these neurotransmitters called calcitonin gene-related peptides. And um, what the drugs do is they block these calcitonin gene-related peptides, which would then signal pain, which triggers a migraine. And so these drugs are actually able to stop migraines before they happen. And while they actually are happening, it'll lessen them. Uh -huh. So I think it's great for migraine sufferers um, to really have a better migraine uh -huh. treatment. I think it's cool. I mean, it's something that's moving us in the right direction. What I'm still a bit concerned about, though, is that A, it's still early days for the study, and B, we still don't know that much about the root physiological causes of migraines. I'd like to know a lot more about that. 
Yeah, and also they're saying that a lot of this uh, great work that they've been seeing has mostly been anecdotal, mm. and these peptides that they are using, they apparently they res they restrict blood flow to the brain. So if you're having like a stroke or maybe a heart attack, it could actually exacerbate that problem. So we definitely need to learn more about this in the future. That's a little scary. All right, guys, I know we think tells what you think using the hashtag four 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 science.